Oh, I started the week in Clayton, New Mexico. I walked into Oklahoma and went to Felt, Oklahoma, Boys City, Oklahoma, Keys, Oklahoma, and then Elkhart, Kansas, and then Rolla, and made it to Hugoton. From Clayton to Felt was pretty far, and Felt to Boys City was pretty far. I remember walking that day, it was like 20-something miles, and I was just beat when I got there. And I already walked like 22, 21 miles or something, and I was going to try to do a couple more. And I could see the town up ahead, but it seemed pretty far at that point. And uh, Roberta came and got me, and she said, your mom sent me. And she said, you know, you probably want a shower, don't you? I said, I would love a shower. And so she took me back to her house and ended up hosting me at her house. And, uh, and then um, she connected me with the Methodist Church, but when I got there... She made some phone calls and stuff, but nothing really came through in Boy City. So when I got there, the woman said, oh, yeah, Roberta had called me. And I actually was feeling quite faint when I got to, not when I got there. I have this thing that's happened a few times where I get somewhere. I take off, once I take off my pack, which I did at the grocery store before Roberta called me. So when Roberta called me, I was just about passing out. So anyway, so she said, okay, it's just two, two blocks away. So I walked over to the Methodist Church, and they were quite unprepared for me, even though they had some phone calls from her. She literally took up a collection from these women at the church, and they also threw in, threw in money for the hotel and for me to eat dinner and breakfast. So I stayed at the um, Crystal Hotel, which had just recently reopened, and... Um, I also ate dinner at the Crystal Restaurant, which had recently opened, <laughs> and then uh, got up the next morning, and uh, once again, the, the waitress was really nice. She said, I know a bunch of people in uh, your next town, which was Keys, and I'll call around, and I said, oh, that's so nice of you, and she said, and breakfast on, is on me, so she bought my breakfast, <laughs> and I, I had done a blog post about waitresses are the nicest people. Waitresses are the nicest people. Their job is to be nice to you, but that doesn't mean they have to be generous, you know, and kind and helpful. And I've had a lot of people be really nice to me in restaurants, so waitresses, that is. Anyway, so I walked to Keys, and kind of nothing really came through from what she, she thought she had something set up for me, or the people who at the hotel thought they had something set up for me. So even though Roberta had called the minister of the Baptist Church. He was not expecting me. Also, I said two, two times when they didn't really expect me. So I called him and I said, I'm at the park. And he said, oh, oh. The local the place. The <laughs> yes. oh, I thought about my wires. I heard you had a place to stay. And I said, I don't, I don't think so. I haven't heard anything from anybody. <laughs> so you had your number. Well, you know, and he my made about town had... 20 calls for me. And it's harvest time. And it's a terrible season for the farmers, actually. There has been no rain. None. None. So all the dry farmers, they didn't even plant crops this year. Already. And a lot of the cattle farmers are just selling it. They can't, they can't continue to feed them. There's no crops. So hey, everything's expensive. So they're just selling off a lot of their stock. Anyway, so it's harvest time. And a lot of people were out, and it's it was coming up on Fourth of July, so he couldn't find anything, and he felt terrible. And I said, I, "No, it's fine." He said, "Well, I can put you up in the church, and the youth, you can sleep in the youth room." And I said, "That's fine. There's couches. I'll be comfortable." And then from there, I walked to Elkhart. That's right, Elkhart, and that was another. That was my mom had actually again called ahead there, and I said, "I'm sorry, mom, to keep having you do this. I just." I can't even make a phone call, and I'm not sure about my, my reception is in and out. No one can hear me. There's just wind, 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 wind that pushes you off the road. Wind, dirt, dust, wind. It's, it's the dust. It, yep, yeah, it's Oklahoma. I'm in the Dust Bowl region, and it is drier than it was back in the 30s. They have had less rain. The only reason things are not a big giant dust cloud 
like I just heard they had in Phoenix, is that their irrigation practices and their farming practices are much better. Back in the 30s, they overturned all the grass. And um, one of the uh, guys who moved to that area, who's also a Native American and also a cowboy, uh, forget his name. Anyway, I was listening to a program about the Dust Bowl because I've been looking things up about it. It's really interesting to me because it makes it very real to walk through this region during a drier time than what they had in the 30s. In the 30s, they had consecutive years with no rain. But um, he said when he saw the farmers turning up the grass to put in crops, he's like, wrong side up you know and the grass is what holds together the grasslands and I've been walking through grasslands and there is no grass only thing alive are the cacti and for some reason the weeds along the side of the road manage to somehow eke out enough water to sustain themselves and flower for next year and there's the edges of the highway are covered in flowers from Arizona to Kansas so far. And they go about four feet off the side of the road. And there's just nothing beyond that. And when I got to Elkhart, um, my mom had made some phone calls and connected me with the Lutheran minister there. And he, it was funny because he's a uh, Missouri Senate. And my dad grew up Missouri Senate Lutheran. And his grandfather was a Missouri Senate Lutheran minister. And they are known in German, German Lutheran. And when I told the minister that, he said, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's really cool. He was like, he, he, he took me all around, gave me a tour of town. He took me out to this area that they had a big burn. And it looks like the moon. It's sand dunes. This is farmland. There's little sticks of cut off corn stalk sticking out of sand dunes and it makes it really relevant to do this project on foot at this time it's Elkhart not Elkhart I'm sorry Boyce City Boyce like Boyce Boyce City um, when I stayed there I heard that I looked up some stuff and they had not had rain in May they had not had rain for 222 days and made the New York Times. I don't, I don't know that they've had any rain since then. They have had a half inch of rain this year. This area has had two inches. They usually have 15. And they're just using their wells to water the corn and have corn crops. Um, they've got some cotton crops that are functioning, but it's uh, tough times. Just not fun to be a farmer right now so I um the he took me out and showed me that area he also took me out to the point of rocks to show me the Santa Fe Trail the real Santa Fe Trail not the one along the highway that has a big sign that says Santa Fe Trail actually it's 20 miles that way <laughs> but um and it was really cool because you could see the where the wagons had gone through it's still there it's it goes along the, where the river would be. He took me to the natural spring up there, and he's like, holy moly, this is all dried up. I've never seen it like this. So and he pumped the handle on the, the you know, there's a, kind of like an artesian well or something. He pumped the handle on the, on the water thing there, and uh, it took like eight or nine pumps, and some water came out. But he's like, usually it comes out at like three. <sighs> like, wow. And so... There, you know, I, I imagine it's it's the Oka, this uh, aquifer or something around here, but which includes like Nebraska, Oklahoma, Kansas, and um, I, I they have to be draining their wells too. And somebody was talking about the irrigation and the fact that like, well, that's our drinking water too. <laughs> so, and I've seen this all along. I mean, last week episode will also mention this because. It's from, it's been crazy dry all through Arizona, all through New Mexico, all through that smoke and crazy, ugh. The only precipitation I have seen on this trip was snow in Arizona in May, which they said hasn't happened in 50 years. So <laughs> when I got to um, Hugoton, I actually did get a little rain. And that was exciting. It not just rained, but it rained while we drove to the grocery store. And as we went into the grocery store, it was still raining. So I was like, woo! I, I've been 
I, I pray for rain for this region. And on a personal level, it's been really nice that it hasn't been pouring rain on my electronic equipment. <laughs> so then, let me, I guess I should finish up the week. I um, went to, uh, walked to, from Elkhart. I stayed a couple nights. And, well, and they put, the, so the United Ministries has this program where they'll put up, it's called Traveler's Program. And he said, you're definitely one of the more interesting travelers we've had. Because sometimes it's, they have a lot, he said, we have a lot of uh, hitchhikers and walkers that come through this area. And sometimes they're just, you know, someone who's destitute and crossing the country or whatever. He said, for, for some reason, we're on that highway of um, travelers. And so he took me to the police station so I could sign in. And then he gave me a, a hotel voucher and food vouchers. And then he gave me a tour of the town. And then he took me to uh, the grocery store so I could use my food voucher. Because he's like, I know they're going to be like, what is this? And the turn up there, like, what is this? He's like, it's a program for United Ministries. This person is allowed to buy food here for $5. And so I got some trail mix. And then he took me to uh, one of the restaurants in town. And it just so happened that um, some somebody from his congregation was there. And she invited me to sit down. And I talked with her and her husband. And they ended up buying me dinner. So even though I had the voucher, you know, so... And then they took me to my hotel. And the hotel was really cool because the guy who owns it is um, Filipino. And he just loved what I was doing. He just thought it was the coolest thing. He's like, really? Really? Walking? Nobody does that. Just walking? He's like, well, I mean, some people do that. But that's very few people in this world decide to walk 2,000 miles. And they told me, like, different people he'd heard of that were doing this. And somebody who'd stayed there who was bicycling across the country. But um, he said... Uh, well, let me make you breakfast. So he made me breakfast. He made me scrambled eggs and with soy sauce and, you know, and fresh fruit. And, and I said, well, I usually cook for my hosts. So I stayed two nights there because I, I needed a day off desperately, desperately. But in the hundreds with 20, over 20 mile stretches. And I can do that for a couple of days, but it, three, four days. I had done 80 miles in four days and I was just cooked literally cooked, 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 so uh, took a day off and updated all my stuff, and then I cooked him dinner, and he actually cooked me a Filipino dish ahead of time with mung beans and coconut milk, and that's pretty cool, and he gave me a discount so I could stay another night, um, and then he, well, not only that, he actually drove my stuff to Rala, the next town, he said, why don't you just go with your little backpack, and then I'll drive your stuff to you. I was like, oh, come on. He's like, no, it's like nothing. It's like 15 minutes in a car. It was going to take you, you know, five hours, six hours. But for me, it's nothing. So um, I got to the next town, and he brought my stuff, and uh, I met with Mary, and then I stayed at her house. And then she, uh, I cooked her dinner, and that was fun. And they were, you know, her daughter was in the process of moving, and they were helping her find an apartment. And still they took me in, which was really cool. 